In the GBA era, Mario was a bit weird. There wasn't really any new mainline entries, but they did port all the classics, so no one really complained. But there were actually really a lot of goofy-ass Mario games. We had Mario as a pinball, turn-based Mario, a few sports Marios, and they even dropped the first Mario Party for handhelds. Nintendo recently realized they can actually make money by remaking games rather than just porting them straight up. And although they've picked two great ones recently, they're still reluctant to giving us the ones we really want. This is one they remade that actually made me ask, why? Why, if you have all these other properties to remake, why do you go with this weird puzzle platformer crossover series? I'm gonna try and find out as I look into Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Mario has been going at it versus Donkey Kong since before he was even actually called Mario in the early 80s. In 2004, now both characters have been established as icons, and that's when we get Mario versus Donkey Kong for the Game Boy Advance. It technically serves as a spiritual successor to Donkey Kong for the Game Boy released in 1964, and the story is that Donkey gets brainwashed by marketing and wants to buy all the mini Mario toys, but they sold out. So he breaks into the factory and straight up steals them. And because those are apparently the biggest cash flow Mario has at the time, we must get them back. Gameplay is pretty simple. You platform around the level with the goal of opening doors with a key, collecting presents, and rescuing the mini Marios that Donkey is just dropping as he's running away. I'm gonna be honest, I feel dumb for even saying this, but back in the day, this game kinda gave me the ick, and it's not even its fault, it's really some stupid reason. And I still remember this pretty vividly. Back in 2004, this game was brand new. I found myself at a Walmart, and I came across a Game Boy Advance demo kiosk with this game inside. I remember standing at the stupid kiosk for around 50 15 minutes pressing every button this stupid demo Game Boy had and Mario wouldn't move. It took so long that my mama finally came by and said yo it's time to go and I left that Walmart forever thinking that that game absolutely sucked and I'm never ever gonna play it again. This was imprinted in my brain. It's totally unreasonable and I'm gonna say it right now. I was tripping at least for this game because it's pretty good. It's challenging, it's creative, and more fun than I thought it was gonna be. I do like the Danky Kang as the main villain, and that we fighting over something so simple and stupid as toys, which really makes you underestimate the difficulty going in. But the fact that you're fighting against Donkey Kong gave me this classic feeling. So like I said, there's a combination of platforming and puzzle solving you must do to proceed. There are these color buttons to activate color colored elements on the stage. There's also time ticking away and presents to collect for points. You must complete all this in a certain amount of time without dying to earn stars on each level, which adds a ton of replayability already. This also might be the weakest Mario ever made because he dies with one hit. There are no power-ups that we know of, except for really the classic hammer that helps you take out enemies that are lying your way. You can pick some of the enemies up too, which gave me flashbacks of Mario too. There are a few enemies I really had never seen before and actually never seen after, and kinda don't feel like they're part of the Mushroom Kingdom. And of course, there are some classic enemies we've all known and loved to hate. Mario has a few different ways of jumping. Of course, use what you want to get through. One is that you can do a handstand which protects him from stuff that falls on his head. He also has backflips and a ton of other ways you can use to jump over things. Mario does everything very slowly, so patience is a must. You have to wait for the thing to come to you. You must wait for everything. If there's nothing worse than being in what feels like a very easy puzzle, but your patience keeps screwing you up. That's happened to me a lot. I'm very impatient. I want it now. Hurry up. That's what really screwed me up for this whole game was the patience. Also, your puzzle solving skills definitely get tested here. As you go along, the game is always evolving and changing, giving you new creative ways to proceed, which is really why I think you get this little tutorial before each level. It's kind of like a, hey, this is what you need to have in mind to beat this thing, so pay attention. After a few levels, there are mini games for extra lives. The one with the arrow one I liked and it got easy, but the donkey one crossing the box is the really one I hated. I really couldn't get a proper grasp on it and I failed a lot on that one. That's really why you can tell I don't have a whole lot of lives. The seventh level of each world, you take the toys that you've been saving along the way and you must now escort them kind of lemming style into a toy box after collecting the letters to the word toy. The Mario toys are kind of slow and dumb, so you must guide them over to the spring or hit platforms they can use to get across to you. Again, you really must be patient and find the best way around the danger to get to the necessary spot. Because kind of like Mario, these fools are weak as hell. They're toys, so they get a pass. If any of them get touched, you lose them, which is very important because depending on how many you save here, these are the amounts of lives or hits that you get heading into the next level, which is actually a throwdown against Danky 
At first there are 8 levels in 6 worlds and once I completed that I thought this was the final showdown against Danky Kang in a classic feeling battle in a cutscene world where he lands on a truck of toys and steals a bag full of toys and I have to start all over again. We get yet another six new worlds, and in these levels, the toys are really loose. They're not inside the little bubble pack. And in each level, each toy has a key, and you must get him and guide him to the door again. This go around is a bit harder because now they mix everything that you've learned up to this point. I was really baffled here because it really felt like they released within the game a whole nother game. I thought it was done. And all this leads to a yet another donkey throwdown. One of the donkey boss battles does repeat itself. But other than that, all the donkey battles leading up to this were totally different. And once you're done with that, you unlock even more levels in the expert mode. I'm gonna be real, I wasn't really a fan of that format, making me think I was done, even rolling the damn credits and having a whole new game unlocked. Just, again, the patience, give it to me now. So maybe that's changed in the remake. Also, I think they're gonna tone down the difficulty. They tend to do that now with the remakes. Of course, I'm making this video a little bit before the remake actually does come out. So if you're watching this after, please let me know down in the comments if any of these changes that I'm predicting are made. Also, your thoughts on the remake and the original, anything at all, yell at me down in the comments. I'm also very curious what they're going to do with Mario himself because we all know now that legendary voice actor Charles Martinet has stepped away from voicing Mario and actor Kevin Afghani actually voiced Mario in Super Mario Wonder and in my opinion did a pretty good job. Mario in Mario vs Donkey Kong talks a whole lot. I've probably played 90% of every single Mario game ever made and I think I can say that this is where I've heard him talk the most easily. Not because he's just making noises, I mean he does that after every single move, but he also talks in the cutscenes and in between levels yelling at Donkey Kong, he just talks a lot. They might just reuse Charles lines or something. I don't know. I'm just kind of curious about that weird stuff like that kind of piqued my interest. As long as this line is put in the remake, I don't care. I'd be happy. This line really made me crack up for some reason. I just never really heard Mario say these words. Come back here, you big monkey. But back to the question in hand. Why did they decide to remake this? Obviously, we can't know for sure. Maybe it's just the easiest thing to remake. My guess is that they feel like this series was slept on, and I'm not going to lie, it was by me, and I'm sure many people out there as well. Also, I'm sure, just like with everything, there are diehard fans of this series as well. Please feel free to rep which side you're on down in the comments again. But the truth is, this game sold 1.3 million copies on a console that sold over 80 million units. They also know that the first Mario vs. Donkey Kong was actually the lowest selling one in the series. The other hand is, I didn't even know that six of these games actually were released. But now that I've actually played the original game, I'm not as baffled as I once was watching the announcement trailer. I can only speak on this game, and at least this game was pretty fun. Again, with a ton of challenges and a lot of replayability, my cynical brain thought this was an easy cash grab, but the more I think about it, maybe they just really want this series to succeed. It's basically where it all started for them. Mario vs. Donkey Kong. That makes more sense to me now that I've played it. But of course, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you've made it this far, please consider subscribing. Thank you guys for watching. And remember to always and forever, you do you. <laughs>